a, a fraught understanding, not an equal understanding, but an old understanding, which was, was not yielding as yet a new understanding, but rather a moment of uncertainty, a moment um, in which right and wrong were in question, um, in which cultural hegemony was loosened. And um, I think that I don't see anything to suggest that a new hegemony 15 years later, 20 years later, has been imposed. On the contrary, um, one can see the, 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 the culture wars in Jamaica and the battles raging, albeit that the balances may have shifted somewhat. I think that, um, that the peculiarity of the moment is that um, insurgent notions of, of cultural right and wrong um, from below have grown in strength, but they have not been accompanied by institutional forms that could lead to a new hegemony in the old sense, but rather to competing notions existing in an in a uncertain relationship alongside each other. Well, my understanding of the hegemonic dissolution is not something that's a year or even no. ten years. It's a long it's a process. process. Yes. But I like the concept of modeling through that you put in the in envisioning the, yeah. Caribbean future because I think it reflects much of what governance is about and much of about what non governance is also a vote. Yes. But probably non governance may be a little more structured because it's based on family and mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and individual mm -hmm. votes. How long can modeling last? I don't know. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I think of my good friend um, and perhaps your good friend too, Peter Phillips, who is, who is um, the Minister of Finance in Jamaica today. And, you know, Peter's history is, if, if nothing else, as, as um, sharply defined as any one of us in terms of, of his movement from Rastafarianism, active involvement in the 12 tribes, to, to um, Minister of Finance in, in 2014 in Jamaica and running an IMF agreement um, to the letter and not deviating from it um, for fear of, of our losing all. No, no, you know, I am on a panel this afternoon with Peter when I leave here and Damien came to discuss the IMF agreement. And I honestly at this time don't know, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to say it. But um, what strikes me is that if I were in Peter's position, I, the question I have, I have to ask myself is how many options would I have um, that would not lead to an imminent collapse of the Jamaican economy as we know it. Uh, accompanied by all the, the, the obvious uh, corollaries, including our exclusion from the world economy, including a severe uh, contraction of the already contracted Jamaican economy with, with unknown, or should I say, known rep repercussions in terms of, this, of, of the tearing of the social fabric of, of, of Jamaica. So, uh, the question really is, um, is Peter's modeling through something that, that any of us could avoid were we put in the position of being in the driver's seat, which is what he's ineffecting. And this is, <coughs> is something that we need to consider. I, I, I know some of my colleagues will tell me that we should default or that we should um, pursue a strategy of perhaps even delinking, although not, not many people are using that word nowadays. But I don't know how many people will be willing to live with the immediate consequences of, 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 of such an approach. This is, this, is, this is where the modeling through thing comes in as a real issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Certainly, I went to a lecture by Mutabaruk on Monday yes. at Emancipation Park, and he referred to Peter, Peter 
Philip's in relation to it, Peter's past as a 12 tribe yes. man. Yes. And he said, we and them. And yes. like Peter was we, and now it's them. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes we move from we to them and so on. Exactly. So playing with yeah, that. With words, yeah. Bob Marley. Well, Bob we don't know how we and them are going to work it out. out. Yes. Um, isn't there one factor, however, that maybe they left? hasn't taken into account or didn't take into account and that is it the power of markets yes and the way that functions to determine how the kinds of decisions that we make and given jamaica's indebtedness which is probably a little below 140 percent of mm -hmm. gdp you don't have much of an option well this is it and um you know the question is really i mean if you, if, you, if we return to, for the moment to the notion of the state the question the question is not absolute sovereignty not even the united states mm -hmm. has that the question is relative sovereignty the question is sovereign space and how can you be in a space in which you have the, the most or the greatest possibility of of of, of choosing alternative policy options or alternative strategies and to do that one has to has to be relatively fit it's like how are you going to run a marathon if you're overweight mm -hmm. right you make a state is grossly overweight yeah. uh, you know to, to to mix metaphors but um we we need to find a way in which we can be relatively fit and then then we can decide on which options to choose the, the truth of the matter is no we are so unfit that we can't run um, but yet we are we have to run in the race. You are absolutely right. Markets are you see what, what underwrote our earlier assumptions was the notion that small states could gain international allies that could circumvent or avoid the power of the markets. I don't think we were entirely unaware. Um, we certainly were aware of the power of the military dimensions of the of international hegemony. But we weren't sufficiently aware that, that markets are a powerful, powerful force. I mean, it's, 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 we don't have to go into, into econometrics. Um, if you fail the IMF test, you, get, you don't get a seal of approval. You don't get any more loans. Nobody will grant you loans. And you will sink. Or you, you, you will go into a state of contraction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's, 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 nothing, it's nothing. That is the power of markets. And, um, you know, the question is, however, if you are in such a position that you are reasonably fit, that your debt to GDP ratios are not too high, then you can perhaps consider alternatives or, or you, 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 you can negotiate different approaches which are perhaps more suitable to the development of your people and more suitable, suitable to the development of your, your country. Um, we need to get back into a situation where we can have sovereign space. Um, and uh, there are states, there are even small states that have sovereign space and therefore able to make certain kinds of decisions. And it's going to require remarkable, remarkable leadership. I'm not sure if that leadership is, is there, but um, that is what I'm thinking about. No, you know, I mean, uh, just to reflect on Peter again, you know, if, if I'm not mistaken and I stand to be corrected, Muta was expelled from 12 tribe, and at the time, I think Peter was on the, on the executive. Um, um, that I seem to remember as a particular history, but then again, I don't know who is we and who is them in that context, I know. <laughs> yeah, let me, since this time we're drawing to yeah, a conclusion, yeah. I wanted to, to what extent is the notion of a progressive movement, the left, to what extent are these categories still useful? are relevant given the intergenerational change that has come with the technology and yeah. with different pursuits with a less focus on the state and so on i think i think certainly the notion of a left is historical in the caribbean and it represented uh, a tendency within a number of generations to make substantial change to the benefit of the broad majority of the Jamaican people. The time of that left has come to an end, and the kinds of formations that would make a change are not yet immediately apparent. 
Um, there are some tendencies which are very positive, and, and some of them which, they, as you have mentioned, which we have to interrogate a little more to, 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 to assess you know, where they are going to. But um, one thing was certain is that um, the Jamaican people, and I, you know, I extrapolate to the Caribbean people, are not sitting still. They're not waiting for intellectuals to define what a movement is and a progressive movement. They are moving ahead on all, all, all fronts. Young people don't have much, much time for this because they are, they are involved in, in making it in life, in forging their own networks across the internet. Um, they're not uh, restricted by national boundaries. You know, their networks are, are exemplary in terms of how they link up with people all over the world and their, their friends are all over the world. And from that perspective, the kind of world they are forging is going to be completely different from the ones that we knew. To the extent that they can look back at our attempts to change things and draw inspiration from it, I think is going to be the most important question. Not only inspiration from what we, the very few things that we did that were positive, but from the things that the mistakes we made as well. Um, but the, the world is going to be completely different. Will it have a place for small nation states? I wouldn't rule it out entirely yet. I think the, the era of the small state is not closed. But it's a small state that's going to look very different, whose networks are going to be very different, and whose, and, you know, things like the diaspora, um, the different diasporas, that link up together to constitute a networks of support will be very different. And I think, therefore, that um, our role will be less as prophets mm -hmm. and more as historians. Mm -hmm. But historians have an important role to play, too. Well, are you saying now that <coughs> the historians will take over theory, since you basically are a theoretician? I, I don't call myself a theoretician, you know. I mean, I, call I, I call myself a, a, a comparative observer. Okay, we have to end comparative observation at this point. Thanks very much, Brian. Thanks, Rupert, for spending time with me. Yeah, yeah.